Hello. Here we will talk about the reliability calculation. So the reliability calculation mainly focus on how to calculate the system reliability from the component reliability, which means we know the reliability for each component, but by putting the component into different structure, what will be the system reliability? The first one is we call it rule one. It says if two or more events are independent and success is defined as a probability that all of the events occur, then the probability of success is equal to the product of the probability of the event. Now the example says that uh, we have two buttons. To successfully run the machine, both buttons need to be pressed down and it should work. So this is what I call serial structure. Why it is called a serial structure? So for such a structure, it's just like I need to deliver water to my destination, maybe my sink or, or, or the bucket, but I need two pipes to connect to each other and then deliver the water. If this is the case, then either one of these two pipes, if it is broken, then I cannot deliver the, the, the water to my destination, which means the system will fail. So the system reliability depends on the success of all components. And by definition, we can easily calculate the system reliability as 0.95 times 0.88, which gives us a result of 0.836. So you may see in this video clip when we calculate reliability, I always keep more than two digits after the decimal point because later you will see for the system reliability a lot of time the difference happens in the third or even the fourth digit after the decimal point. So only two digits after the decimal point is not enough. Now for this structure one, the serial structure, we need to be careful to see that the system reliability is always below any single component's reliability. Why? You need to think about it. The second structure is what I call parallel structure. It mentioned that the two events are independent and the success is defined as the probability that at least one of the events will occur. Then the probability of success equals to the probability of either one plus one minus that probability multiplied by the other probability. So this is how it do the calculation, but I prefer the calculation the using rule three. So rule three basically is an extension of rule two. So I will demonstrate how to do those calculations. Now example says that uh, we have power company which deliver electricity to us with a reliability of 0.97 and uh, I also have a generator as backup. So for such a system, the system reliability will be what is the probability that I will not run out of power. Now since generator and a power company both deliver electricity to me, so I will run out of power only when both of them fail. So I call it a parallel structure because it looks like that I have two pipes and these two pipes deliver water to my destination parallelly and independently. So if either one of these two pipes break, it doesn't matter, I still have the other one. So the system, oh, I will not be able to get the water I need only when both of them break. So now you see, Based on such description, the system reliability will only be 1 minus the probability that both components fail. So that is how I conduct this, this calculation. Here we can calculate the probability that the power company break and the probability that generator break. And I multiply these two numbers together, give me a number of 0 0.003, which is the probability that both generator and the power company will sh shut down or, or will break. Now, I use one minus this number 
which will be the properties are not both component will break, which gives me a system reliability of 0.997. Now, you see, for such a parallel structure, the system reliability is always higher than any single component's reliability. Why? You need to think about it again. So for system reliability rule 3, as I mentioned, it's just a, an extension of rule 2. So I will just quickly go over it. Assuming that we have three calculators I bring to the classroom and what is a property that, that I won't meet any trouble using the calculator to do my uh, exam. So when, what is the situation that I will have trouble? That is the case that all three will break. All three calculators will break. If all three calculators break, then I will have trouble. The probability for either single one of them will break is calculated first, and next step I calculate that is the probability that all three calculators break by multiplying the breaking probability for each single one of them. And then I use one minus this probability that all three components break to get the system reliability. Now, you see, for all these three calculators, the highest reliability is only 0.85, but by using three calculators to back up each other, I can have a system reliability as high as 0.9925. That is how people do. In reality, we use low quality component, but we design the system to have multiple backups to improve the system reliability. Let's take a look at a little bit more complicated system and see how can we calculate the system reliability for this example. Now, this example, we have serial structure and we have parallel structure. For complicated system like this one, the key is to identify the subsystem of the original system so we can calculate the subsystem reliability first and then use the subsystem reliability to calculate the system reliability. So here we can see the first stage or the first subsystem actually has two components. These two component, components work parallelly, means they back up from each other. So we have the first, second, and third subsystem. And for these three subsystems, we can calculate the reliability for each of these three subsystems. Where we have a first subsystem has a reliability of 0.99, second subsystem has a reliability of 0.9925, and the third has a reliability of 0.97. Now, these three subsystems work serially in a serial structure. In a serial structure. So if we want the system to work properly, all these three subsystems need to work at the same time, or they need to success at the same time. So the next step is we just multiply the reliability of each subsystem and get the system reliability. Example. So the guidance system of a ship is controlled by a computer that has three major modules. In order for the computer to function properly, all three modules must function. Two of the modules have a reliability of 0.99 and the other has a reliability of 0.97. First question, what is the reliability of the computer? Now, for this system, it denoted to say that all three modules must work fun function, must function, so the computer will work. So when we say all three, it sounds to us it is a serial structure. So the three one need to work together so the computer will function. So the structure will be we have three components that they are linked together and all three need to work properly to let the computer function. So the system reliability or the computer reliability will be simply multiplying together all these three components reliability, we get a system reliability or computer reliability at 0.95. Part 
Part two said now we have backup computer. This backup computer is exactly the same as the original one, and uh, it most mentioned as soon as the major of the original computer fail, the new computer or the backup computer will be switched on automatically. Now, what will be the reliability of the new system? Now, when we see the backup, we know that is a parallel structure. We have one original computer, we have backup computer. Both of them have the same reliability, system reliability equals to 0.95 as we just calculated in part A, because we said the backup computer is identical to the original computer. Now for such a system, we can easily calculate the system reliability equals to 0.9975. Here, I list everything. So 1 minus 0.95 will be the probability that the original computer fail, and it's the same for the backup computer will fail. So we got 0 0.0025 as the probability that both two computers fail, and we got 1 minus this number will give us the system reliability. Part C said, well, now we have backup computer, but the backup computer cannot be automatically be switched on. We have a switch. So if we need to let the backup computer work, both the switch and the backup computer need to work. So now we have switch and backup computer. The two work together as a subsystem to back up the original computer. So what we do here is we first calculate the subsystem include the switch and the backup computer. This subsystem has a reliability of 0.93 and the whole subsystem will work as the backup of the original computer. So to calculate the reliability of such a system, we need to work on the parallel structure where one component has a reliability of 0.95, that is the reliability of the original computer, and the other component has a reliability of 0.93, which is reliability of the switch and the backup computer. Now we can use what we did earlier to get the system reliability equals 0.9965 and we see that this switch actually reduced the reliability of the system. 